To celebrate February, the month of love and romance, or at least the commercialized month of love and romance, I decided to become part of the problem. To become part of the problem and honor this month by tier ranking every single romance book that I've ever read in my life. Just to be clear, there will be no romantic fantasy romance or romantic fantasy included in this video. We all know that that is what I like the most. Fantasy with romance. Yeah, my heart beats for that. Absolutely, 100%. In this video, I will be focusing on contemporary romance and maybe one or two classic romances and Regency style or Regency era romance. Now, I am super tough on the contemporary romance genre. I am unreasonably tough, unnecessarily tough on the contemporary romance genre. I don't know why, maybe it is because I read a lot of fantasy romance. And when it comes to fantasy romance, I mean, you know, I can really just detach because what are the chances? What are the chances that a godly, beautiful, buffed off, winged male with a huge beep beep will come my way? <laughs> like, <laughs> no chances for that. I mean, I wish, but uh, yeah, not really, not really happening. But when it comes to the contemporary romance genre, that is taking place in our every days and featuring couples who are real people, who are real with real everyday human problems. And it just has to work for me. The connection between the two characters really have to be there. Otherwise, I am not reading the book. Okay, now let's get to the tier ranking because we do have quite a lot of books to discuss today. But before we do that, hey, hi, hello, welcome back. Or welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Juji. I am the Petite Reader and I make weekly bookish videos. And if this is something that sounds good to you or you like any of my other videos, then I think that you should definitely subscribe to my channel. You are welcome here. Okay, back to the tier ranking and back to the tiers. First, let's discuss the tiers. Okay, so the top tier, happily ever after. Yeah. I think that this tier needs no explanation. These are the books that I love, that I adore, and are my absolute all-time favorites with beautiful humans and really nice, healthy relationships. This is what we aim for. The tier below that is I Would Date You. These are the books that were really good, really, really, really good. They are just not necessarily the god tier. Okay, the tier below that. Cute, but that's all. Yeah, these are the books that were cute and I had fun reading them, but they were just nothing special. The tier below that. I can't remember to forget you. Yeah, uh, these are the books that honestly, like I remember um, reading them, oh, but I don't really remember anything. Nothing really stuck with me, the characters or the relationship. I remember absolutely nothing. And then the tier below that, the bottom tier, is haters to enemies. Oh boy, do I hate these books. I hate them. I think that they are incredibly toxic and the author should apologize for publishing these books. Okay, now I'm going to take a second to minimize myself and um, let's get to the tier ranking. The first book on my list is... <laughs> <laughs> a classic Jane Austen book persuasion well um, I think that this is the only classic book that I actually included on this list but you know in my humble opinion Jane Austen books are very much romance books so yeah persuasion 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 cute but that's all and I'm sure that I am not the only person who feels about persuasion the same way. I don't think that this is Jane Austen's best book, best novel ever. The next one is Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Dare. And honestly, 
god tier top tier happily ever after this book was my first historical smutty book and oh my god i absolutely loved it and i recommend this book to everybody and i want to read every single book in this series because i think that it's a four book series oh my god it was so good the plot the characters the relationship between the characters it was also feminist so i particularly enjoyed that and it was so 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 funny honestly guys if you haven't read any duchess will do i highly highly recommend that you pick it up you will not regret it the next book on the list is the rosie project oh my god now this is my first book recommendation that i took from bill gates because this book is on his best books list and uh no i'm sorry bill but no if you think that this is a good romance book then you're in trouble this book was absolutely terrible some people describe it as sheldon in love and um yeah i would say that's that's correct that's how i would describe this book it was not good not not good really looking at love in an analytical way i didn't enjoy it i didn't enjoy it i am going to take other book recommendations from bill gates but not romance book recommendations no no this was the first and the last okay next book is the hating game and this has to go right up there next to any duchess will do the hating game was the first contemporary romance book that i read in english and this is the book that got me hooked on the contemporary romance genre i love it love it love it this is not the only book i read from sally thorne and i think that i like her books and her writing but this one is truly top-notch and i have a special connection to this book because it introduced the contemporary romance genre to me so you know it will always be an all-time favorite of mine no question there the next book is the kiss quotient and this is gonna go here cute but that's all oh no oh, come down here yeah cute but that's all there were so many things that i really liked about this book i really liked the female character uh, i really liked the autistic representation i really liked that she was a boss babe in this book you know who were who was very successful and who made more um, money than the male protagonist and then he was um, not threatened by that fact and they actually had a very cute relationship so i would put it in the average tier i haven't read any of the other books in the series just this one super 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 spicy super smutty next book the unhoneymooners oh you know what i would date this book uh, i think that this book was good like it really read like a fantastic book to me up until the end when certain things happened in the plot and i just couldn't vibe with that and i was like oh really really are you serious you just destroyed a completely fine book so yeah it's just gonna go here i would date you oh the next is bringing down the duke this is a regency era a romance book and you guys will see that i i tend to like regent sierra romance books and this is a very feminist book that takes place at the university of oxford and honestly i loved everything about it i loved the characters and i loved their very authentic and beautiful relationship and honestly i highly 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 recommend this book this is just not like you know the perfect book to me but it was truly fantastic next book is get a life chloe brown and this is one of my favorite romance books of all time i read every single book in the series you will see them coming up on the list but i personally think that this is the one that's the best in the series and oh my god i loved it i loved it i loved it i loved it and um 
after reading this book I am definitely keeping an eye out on Talia Hibbert's um, upcoming releases. Next book on the list is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne, right? The author of The Hating Game. And honestly, I love this book. <laughs> I'm gonna put it here. I would date this book because it was so good. I remember I read it a couple of years ago during Easter and I read this book in six hours. I truly adored the character and I adored the plot and it was so funny. I remember laughing out loud while reading this book multiple times. It was so, 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 so good. And I adore, adore the cover. So this has to come here. Take a hint, Danny Brown. Um, well, yeah, cute, but that's all. Not the best, not the best book in this series. I didn't really like it. I thought I was going to like it because it takes place in academia and we all know that I am in academia. So I just think, you know, I thought that I would have a special connection with that book, but unfortunately I didn't. So it was cute, but that's all. Oh, and the next book is At Your Age, Evie Brown. And I'm sorry, but this is the book that I really didn't like in this series. So it is going to the tear I can't remember to forget you. And I'm putting it here because I remember not liking this book. I remember that, uh, but I don't remember much else because I didn't like it. And I finished it because I wanted to complete the series, but honestly, I feel like I should have just DNF this book because truly I wasn't there. I didn't care for the characters. I didn't care for the plot. I remember it being super smutty, but that's all. That's all I remember. So sorry, you guys let me know in the comments if I missed something and this is an absolutely fantastic book because that's what people tend to think. I just didn't see it that way. Okay, Beach Read by Emily Henry. Ay, 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 this is gonna go to cute, but that's all. This was not the first Emily Henry book that I read, and um, I really liked it, but when I finished it, I felt that it was just average. It was clear that Emily Henry writes beautifully, and her characters and the relationships that she builds, I like. I truly, truly like her work, but Beach Read was just an average book for me. Next is Wet a Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon. And I think I'm gonna put it here. I would date you. I truly, truly like this book and this is my favorite book from her. I really like everything about this book. The representation, the representation of plus size bodies and um, mental uh, health issues and just the talk about the weather and the characters and it was so funny and the bosses of the characters. I really, really, really um, like this book. So this goes here. And then her other book, The X Talk, cute but nothing special no it was not as good as weather girl in my humble opinion and then the next book is shipped by angie hawkman and oh wow i adore this book oh i really 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 like this book i don't know where to put it should i put it i would date you should i put it here Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna leave it here. I would date you. I don't think that it actually makes it into the top tier, though I did love everything about this book. And when I finished this book, honestly, I wanted to go to the Galapagos. I think it takes place at the Galapagos Islands. I immediately wanted to go there. And um, yeah, I really liked everything about this book, the characters and the love story, but also the commentaries on environmentalism. So I really, really, really did like it. It was just not top tier, you know? That's all. People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. And this is gonna go here. I would date you. I adore this book. I really did up until the last 10% when again Emily Henry pulled something that I just couldn't believe and I was like oh my god this is so insanely stupid like this is something that could never happen in real life although I'm pretty sure it does and I was like no no I'm sorry but you lose me here I'm sorry 
So I was super disappointed because for a very, very, very long time it read like an absolutely god tier book. Next, Portrait of a Scotsman. Oh, this is god tier! This is in the same series as Bringing Down the Duke. I think this is book three. I am not reading them in order, so whatever, because they are not following the same set of characters. And oh my god, this book was so good. I adored the plot, I adored the characters, and super feminist. I, I really liked uh, the male character in this book as well, but main reason <laughs> why it is going up there to the top is because um, I listened to the audiobook. I wanted to listen to the audiobook because the audiobook is Scottish. The guy is Scottish, hence the title, Portrait of a Scotsman. I love it. Scottish accent just does something to me. Okay? Okay? I'm not denying it. One of the best books that I've ever read in my life. And it's got so many different tropes in there, but one of them is the kind of like a forced marriage, close proximity like you know we just have to make it work and I adored it oh I love this book I love 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 this book highly recommend next one it happened one summer okay I can't remember to forget you I know that this book was a booktube darling and everybody tends to like it well I don't I don't like it I really don't. I think my main issue is with the relationship. I didn't get the vibe that the two main characters had an authentic relationship. I think it was all about lust and the whole book was very sexual. But that's all. I don't think that they had chemistry really. So unfortunately it didn't work for me. I was super interested after finishing this book to read the second book that followed the little sister because she as a character and her relationship with the other guy that was just something that uh, felt like a true relationship to me and I was really interested to see how their relationship would develop but I was not really interested in the main characters it just didn't work for me unfortunately Ugh. Ugh. the next is Twisted Love by Anna Huang she should apologize for publishing this book. Oh my god, guys. I know, I know so many people like it. And I am not trying to offend the people who like it. But honestly, like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking when you say that you like this book? This book is so toxic. The man in this book is so toxic. That relationship. Jesus Christ. Like, this kind of possessive alpha behavior is not okay not okay not in a contemporary romance book or like not in like any other books but especially not in the in a contemporary romance book and this is not something that should be romanticized so i'm sorry but and i don't know what i was thinking chewing myself through this book it just made me so angry this is the only book that made me so angry that i actually wanted to finish it Look, in my mind, it actually makes sense, okay? That's all I'm going to say. And the next is the X-Hex. And this is cute, but that's all. I remember reading this little witchy book um, in October in Salem. So I had a really, really, really good time. I would recommend it. I have not read any other books in that series but I think that the first one was actually super cute and I think that this is that typical situation when you find a book in your life exactly at the right time and at the right place so that's what happened between me and this book so super cutesy <gasps> the next book oh my god I love this book dating Dr. Deal oh my god this is absolute top tier I remember reading this book on an insanely hot July day and I was like damn I finished this book in one day it was so good so good I just I just love it I just 
I just love it, love it, love it, love it, love it! Highly recommend it. Next is a Talia Hibbert book, the YA Talia Hibbert book. What's the title? Oh my god, it's such a complicated title. Highly suspicious and unfairly cute. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna put it here. I'm sorry, but this is something that didn't work for me. I remember uh, some of it. It's like teenagers preparing to go to high school and they are like rivals and they go to a camp or something. But I don't remember if they like get together at the end. I'm guessing. And I don't really remember like what was the message of the book. Did they go to university? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I don't remember much, but I remember that I was very, very, very bored reading this book, but yeah, like, you know, when you pick up a YA book that's not necessarily written to your age range, like my age range, then, you know, this can happen. Next, the roughest draft. Oh boy. I really want to put it here, haters to enemies, but I think I'm just going to put it here because all honestly, I don't remember this book. I remember certain things, of course, um, like, they're, uh, do I, do I remember anything? No, actually not really. Oh, I remember now what I didn't like about this book, yeah, yeah, um, I'm just gonna leave it there because I am clearly having a hard time recalling what actually happened plot-wise um, in the book, so I'm just gonna leave it there, but honestly, it was not my favorite. And the next is a Fallon Ballard book, Lease on Love, and I'm gonna put it here. I would date this book. This is a short romance book, and it takes place in New York City, or is it Brooklyn? Maybe it takes place in Brooklyn. And the girl is a florist. Florist. What is a florist? I really, really like this book. It was not perfect, and because it was a little bit shorter, like a 50 to 100 pages shorter than an average romance book, I, I felt that not everything was fleshed out, especially when it came to the, to the man in the book, but that's okay, I, I would still date that book. I would. Next, Hook, Line and Sinker. I can't remember to forget you. Um, just like I said, I was really looking forward to read this book, which is the second book in this series. It happened one summer, right? Following the little sister. Oh uh, boy, this was so bad. Honestly, I think that this was way worse than the first book, so maybe I should move the first book. Should I? Because this one was way worse. But it's not toxic, it's not bad. It was just a really bad book. I'm just gonna leave it there. Next, The Romantic Agenda. Sorry, I can't remember to forget you, but I am so happy that there are so many people out there who felt seen by this book. I am, I am genuinely happy about that and I understand the importance of this book. Next, Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Um, cute, but that's all. I really don't get the hype about this book. I'm sorry. Emily Henry is a fantastic writer characters, plot, everything is like there, but book lovers specifically felt super, super, super boring to me. I'm sorry. But the next book, The Dead Romantics by Ashley Paxton. This goes here to the top because this is one of the best freaking romance books that I've ever read in my life. I love the paranormal aspect of this book, but what I really adored about this book is the female main character in the book reconnecting with her roots, and I love the ending. I love, uh, there is not a single thing I didn't like about this book, and I am looking forward to read her other release probably very soon because, oh my god, I adore this book. It was so, so, so good. Next is by the book, I can't remember to forget you. 
I remember certain things. I remember the locations and I remember that it was about like a writer and a literary agent, I think. Uh, but I don't remember anything else. I don't remember the relationship. I don't remember how it developed. Oh boy, I really should pay more attention to these books because honestly, I can only remember snippets. It's, it's a problem. Next is Thank You for Listening by Julia Velen. I would date this book. This is a fantastic book. I didn't know that Julia Velen was a writer. Well, now I do. And oh, ho, 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 what a writer she is. An absolutely beautiful book. Um, I like the romance in this book, but that's not why I am putting it here into this tier, but it is because because I think that Julia Velen did such a fantastic character work in this book with her um, female protagonist. Uh, it was insane. Like, this book is so, so, so deep. Fantastic. Fantastic. Next is Dream On by Angie Hockman. Uh, the same person who wrote Shipped. And honestly, I think that this book was just cute. Um, and nothing special. I picked up this book <laughs> because the premise sounded okay but also in this book the guy is a florist and I don't know if you can see the theme here florist in this book and then florist in Lee on Love like I really love plants I am a plant mom so <laughs> when you give me a romance book when one or both of the characters are florists. Honestly, I am going to read it. <laughs> That's all. But it was cute. Nothing else. Okay, next book is The Mistletoe Motive. And I am going to put it here. I would date you. I would totally date this book. It's such a nice Christmassy romance. And come on. It's a romance that takes place between two bookshop employees. And this is a very short book. But the representation that this uh, author did in this book, there is representation for diabetes and there is um, demisexual uh, representation in this book as well. And I think it was like fantastically done. The only problem is that this book is short. It's only 200 pages. And I think that uh, the author should have made this book longer and do a little bit more character work. And... Um, work on the relationship that the the two had what honestly it was such a nice christmas romance i absolutely love it i i really do like this book okay we are entering the ellie hazelwood era of mine oh boy below zero i can't remember to forget you this was not a good book this book is about NASA employees and like the kind of things they do in a NASA lab and uh, the way the, the male character is obsessed with the girl. I think it was toxic. Should I put it in toxic? I'm going to put it in toxic. That's where it belongs. Next, stuck with you. 360 turn because stuck with you is going into the top tier. This was my first Ellie Hazelwood masterpiece <laughs> that I read. Uh, it's a hundred pages long novella, right? And I love that. I love that. That little novella by Ellie Hazelwood, I think it was perfect. I loved everything about it, it was so good! And then the third little novella in this collection, Under One Roof. <sighs> this was cute, but that's all. I didn't feel any connection to this. If you want to read anything from this novella collection, I would recommend Stuck With You. And then the next book is an other agency era book, A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting. And honestly, I would date this book. 
I think this was so good, except the name of the main character, Kitty. Uh, that's not a good name. But everything else was perfect, perfect about this book. Honestly, I, 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 I recommend um, this book. It doesn't really make it to the top tier because I had uh, some issues with side characters. But honestly, it was a really, really good book and I loved the concept. And I am really into lately these feminist style Regency era books. So it goes there. Next is X's and O's. I think that this was cute, but that's all. I mostly read this book because it takes place in Boston and it's between a nurse and a firefighter. And it's kind of like a forced proximity situation. Uh, and it was cute. I got the overall message in the book, but honestly, it's just cute. It's, it's nothing special. It's not like, bad I don't want to put it here but it was just it was just okay but I feel that Amy Lee has some room to improve next love theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood and uh, oh boy oh boy where to put this book where to put this book I have a 30 minutes review video about this book about this beautiful piece of Steminist fiction. And I am truly divided because there were so many things that I loved about this book. There were so many things that I hated about this book. Oh my God, where to put it? You know what? I'm going to be generous and I would say I would date you because I am, and I said it in that video, I am truly, truly, truly grateful for Ellie Hazelwood for highlighting uh, the issues that people, especially women, are facing in academia. So yeah, I am going to put that book there. Ooh, and the next book is Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. And I think I'm going to put it here. I would date this book because I loved everything about this book. Just there was one side character who was super annoying and uh, certain plot holes that I just simply didn't understand because it didn't make any sense to me. But honestly, I loved it. I felt that this book had such a unique premise because of all the face blindness issues that are going on in the book and the ending was predictable and we kind of knew after reading the synopsis what's actually going to happen but honestly I think that the author did a fantastic job so it's going there I would date you. Next is Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Cute. Cute but that's all. To me nothing is as good as Weather Girl. Nothing. I really, really do like it. I think that this book was really funny. It was really steamy and also really funny. And I have a separate vlog on my channel where I read nothing else but this book on the beach. And honestly, I had a really, really, really good time reading that book. It's just, it's just not wet a girl, you know? Well, guys, this is it. This is the end of the video. We T-ranked every single romance book that I've ever read in my life. I hope that you enjoyed spending some time with me and you are walking away from this video with some romance book recommendations. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if that's the case. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Hit share, like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I am working on a lot of cool videos that are coming up very very soon in the meantime if you want to check out any of my other videos i will leave them on the screen probably here and here and i'll see you soon in an upcoming video bye